nuclear yeah. power making yeah. a comeback. <laughs> Southern Company's new nuclear plan is now online. Joining us now on his first uh, TV interview is CEO Chris Womack, a Southern Company chief executive, longtime uh, Georgia Power uh, chief, and now in it, Fanning's. He's a young guy. He just oh, he's a young guy. He's a great guy. He is. He's, yeah. he's, he's still involved with. He's got of a lot of life ahead. I mean, he's doing some work with the um, in Impo and a lot of cyber work continue that he's continued to do. So he's still very engaged. You get to talk about nuclear. I do. With us today. Tell us. I mean, oh, it's exciting. It is exciting. No, it's, it's it, a, it, is it, it the it, first it, one in 25 years that's open? Uh, 30, 30 plus years. years. 30, 30 years. plus years. 30 years. And so you know, we brought our first unit online on July 31st. And so we're excited. The plant's running very well, performing very well. And then just yesterday, we completed fuel load on Unit 4. Uh, and so just, I think, just a wonderful opportunity, wonderful celebration for the company that shows we can do hard things. You know, this has not been an easy journey, but we've persisted. We've been relentless in moving forward. And I think the company, the state, the country is going to be real proud that we finished this project because as we make this transition to a carbon-free economy, nuclear has got to be a part of this it can't, future. There's no other so way. We can't do it. I mean, yeah, we're excited about all the renewable activity we're doing. Okay. We just got another 2,100 megawatts of uh, renewables approved in Georgia, 2,400 megawatts in Alabama. So we're making the transition. Uh, we used to have some 66 coal plants, now down to 15. So we're making the transition, but we can't support this economy if, without if, nuclear power. Chris, if you were to say zero hydrocarbons of any kind, yeah. how much of the grid could you power? Zero hydrocarbons? Zero hydrocarbons. How much of the grid? Because don't you have to power the grid for Georgia Power? And for oh, there's no question. So how yeah. much of using the other stuff, whatever you want to call it? No, I mean, like I said, if you, if you look at our field... You mix can't today, do it. You oh, cannot no, do it. You, so how much nuclear do we need and how long is it going to take us? You can't even get a permit for this. No, and that's the exciting thing about completing this project. It shows that we can do this. How we, long did it take? It took us... What, some 13, 14 years. And the next one? Uh, I mean, right now you're looking at different technologies, some small modular reactors. Right. And so we're looking at different technologies. Yeah, how about those? Uh, and so we're excited yeah. about that. I mean, we talked to the government about it. We see some companies looking to move in that direction. So once again, I think the work that we've done at Southern, at Georgia Power, with these Volga units says we can do this. But also, I think more importantly, it demonstrates that for this economy, we have to have nuclear power going forward. Well, so we got to take advantage of this, op of this opportunity for success. If it seems so obvious to you, as, as you, you say yeah. it is, and, and to you, Joe, how, how do you convince more people that it's, a, it's as obvious of the future as, as you suggest I mean, Scott, and see it? it, it? It's hard. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's hard. And, yeah, it's complex. And so one of the things we talk a lot about are solutions and not getting wrapped up in, I think, a lot of these illogical and political divides. Yes, it's hard. And so we got to have partners. Uh, the government's got to be a big partner. There's got to be a consortium, I think, in the industry. I mean, so we all come and try to do this together. We can get it done. Yeah, but it takes a lot of hard work. But I think if you focus on solutions, right. not the politics, not the ideology, you gotta you're committed to get it the, done. got to talk about the politics at least a little because the Green Lobby... No, was totally anti-nuclear. Are they coming yeah. around at all? Look what happened in, in Europe. I mean, I, Look, what happened in Europe. Look what happened in Europe. Look what happened in Europe. They, they, they got rid of all their... Yeah, there is some progress there. But our thing is, it's about the solutions. I mean, we need, we need this to support this economy. I mean, we're proud of the economy in the southeast. In Georgia, 3.2 unemployment rate. Alabama, 2.1% unemployment rate. I mean, economy that's doing very well. I mean, we see opportunities for economic expansion. Did, that's good for did, our business. Did, so, we, did we miss a chance? Well, we're going to have Jerry Bernstein on. $1.2 trillion is now the number that's going to be spent on, on renewables. Is any of that nuclear? Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> but I think the opportunity, once again, is that we've demonstrated we can do this. And even with renewables, you've got to have firm power underneath the renewables that, yeah. when the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow. Yeah, we're going to do other things. We're going to do battery storage. We're going to use hydrogen. We're going to we're going to pursue a lot of other technology. We just got a grant uh, award for direct air capture. I mean, so there there as we all move toward net zero, there's got to be new technologies that I think that will that will have to occur to make sure we can achieve net zero and nuclear has got to be got to be a major part of that. It's right? expensive. 
Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not cheap. I mean, and, and yeah, but I think at the end of the day, our project is still cost competitive. Yeah. It's still cost efficient. It's still it's still in the money for us and for our customers in Georgia. Chris, can you, can you talk about what percent do you think your demand is going to increase over the next 10 years? And can you break down what the source of meeting that new demand will be? I mean, if you listen to conversations about economic expansion, you listen to conversations about electrification uh, from data centers, from, from, right. from, from additional computing power, you hear guess of two times in terms of, in terms of what, will account, what will happen, what will be needed going forward to power this economy. And so you move up nuclear about 20, 20, 25 percent, uh, natural gas, and we got to work on carbon capture for natural gas, other renewables. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how that mix is going to work out, I think, as we go forward. But we know there's going to be a growing need uh, for electricity as we go forward to support this economy. Can we glean anything from, from Southern companies' results about economic activity in the South? Because it was all about weather this, this past quarter. Yeah, I what? mean, we've had kind of the mildest year, probably, in, I think, 129 years. Right. I mean, we've not had the heat wave that we've seen in Texas and other places. The weather has been incredibly Wait mild. Wait a minute. I was uh, just down there for two weeks. It was uh, yeah. Two weeks ago, yeah. it was 115 yeah. degrees every day. Yeah. You know where I am. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I know where you are. Yeah. yeah. No, but, uh, no, but it's, been, it's been a mild year. Uh, we see some heat coming in, coming in this week. Uh, but the thing is, we've got to be prepared for whatever conditions occur. You know, we, we think about our friends out in California now uh, surviving through uh, Hurricane Hillary and what that means. So, yeah, we've seen these extreme weather conditions. And we've got to be prepared from a reliability, but also from, from a resilient standpoint to make sure that we serve our customers.